Freedom! Brave heart, bro. Oh, What's I know. Up, oh, you do. It was good. That was yeah, like a that was like a whisper freedom. I, I know, was. but I didn't want to go because I didn't want to blow the. You, you know, could have gone go full, in the head. Yeah, you, you could have gone. Go the headphones full. go like that. You could have gone full, full ham <laughs> freedom. Just full come ham. off the mic. Full, full ham, ham, whole ham. We don't we don't do partials here. <laughs> That's right. You do we that up all ham. the hams. We go all the way. Christmas ham, ham. Thanksgiving Honey ham. ham. This is ham. This is this is the end of ham. This is the salty dogs podcast. Lunch ham. And you just. Tuned in to our host trying to figure out how to start that the episode. That was the yes, whatever. That was a start. You know what I really liked that one time when you went woo, yeah, and it started right off. Should we the start beat. over? No, and you can do that. Well, how about uh, you? Just we'll do just that make again. that a just thing. Do that. I don't I'll, think I was here for that. Just, just woo right now. And that's what woo. we're saying. Awesome. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> yo, yo. What's here up? we are. <laughs> Man, it's good to be I'm here. I'm a retarded man. Woo, woo. I don't Are think we? you can say that word. You anymore. can't say that word. You can't. You cannot no. say that word, dude. I'm I'm constantly habitually stepping lines, dude. <laughs> <laughs> can I not say habitually either? Because it's got that. a B word in it. <laughs> yeah. You can't do hey, it. Hey, remember last time you, you said accent that. you were going to so go accentuate full expletive? Oh my during gosh. This episode. No, I didn't. You did. Freedom. <laughs> Freedom. Freedom. <laughs> What's up, live viewers? What's up, live viewers? Howdy, howdy. Live that are Welcome. Not live. Welcome to the show. It's good to be here. Christopher has something to start with. Man, it's just... It's, He's yeah, got it's a not, thing. He always not, has a thing. It's all right. just that big. All right, but you, all right, you guys. Here's Christopher's thing. I figured we could talk. We went camping, guys. All the... That us three, we all went camping here. What was yeah. it two weeks ago? Took, I thought took, that was pretty cool. Took the boys. Had, Jason looks so mad that I brought that topic had, up. He had young Ezra. He doesn't even know what to do with that. Had young Ezra out there? Dude. Yeah. Sterling and, and Ezra. Is it, he's, dude. he's sad because... Sterling is Christopher's son, and Ezra is Casey's son. Yeah, and we all man, went when camping. I, when I put that when I put that headlamp on Ezra, dude. He, oh man, man, he was tripping. He loved it. It was a lot of fun. I can't see my flashlight, Dad. It was good. Is that what he said? Yeah, because I kept because it was it on his head. It, well, it I kept turn, head. turning oh. it off because he was blinding everybody by looking at him, and then I turned it off. He's did like, you I can't see my flashlight? Did you daddy. actually sleep that night? A little bit, man. Oh, because of the cars. It, well, yeah. I mean, do, there was a one time at like. Three or four there was a horn. Yes, for like ten seconds. It yeah, was the longest was horn nice. of all time. That was, that so was we nice so we went camping together, which was supposed to be a little bit of a foretaste of Ascension Ministries. Yeah, you want to remind people what that is? Yeah, that's the ministry that we're starting. Um, that I'm starting and Jason's helping me start, or that Jason's starting and I'm helping start. No, either way, it doesn't matter. But doesn't matter. This, yeah, we're just trying to get out there and you know get together with the bros and. You know, get out in nature and creation and, and try to try to reclaim that connection, you know, and, and those healing properties of that connection to nature. And so we got, man, every, every time we're going to keep on doing it. Two yeah. weeks. Two you know, weeks out. You know what I do want to bring up about our camping trip? What? Christopher, tell us about your uh, mean skills on the charcoal grill. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> I think it was all the pressure from all the all the it guys was. around. It Performance I anxiety. I barbecued <laughs> hey, that, almost that every car, weekend. That carne asada was fire. You know, was I, good. you know I can't grill when you're watching. It, I couldn't know. It was I couldn't start a fire. <laughs> I don't know what the heck happened. No, it we had like a good old time. If the Holy Spirit was what caught that fire up in flames, the Spirit was nowhere to be found, man. Not, not in that you. That fire was... <laughs> I don't even think I'm a Christian anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've known that for a while, so... <laughs> well, you could have given me a heads up. I know. Sorry, man. Anyways. Hey, anyway. guess what? You don't know Jesus. <laughs> I don't. Is it because of all the sin I have in my life? Yeah, Jesus Pretty loves you, so I don't have to. Is that the way yeah. it goes? The telltale like sign of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your, spirit in your life <laughs> is whether or not you can the actually fire up some charcoal. That food was not. good, though. You got, you yeah, got some of that... That meat from the North Hood. Marinada. Oh, man. It was orange. Marinated pork. They know yes. how to do it. Yeah, that's how we roll. It was delicious. You made some tacos. Did you learn any Did you learn any kind of lesson? Like, was there anything to this, or you just wanted to bring just it up? just wanted to bring it up. Man, I just thought it was cool. The, it was cool. It was cool. cool. Three, the three hosts went out. Agreed. How, do we hammock? I did. We, we did hammock hammock so hard, dude. Did we, we had, had what, like five seven, or six? No, there was like yeah. seven hammocks up. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice. There was a number of completion, by the way. The seven, <laughs> the only it was a perfect dude, hammock scenario. <laughs> the only downside to that trip was just how close we were. I mean, to we the might as well to the highway. camping on two thirty-five. <laughs> I mean, it, what, it was, yeah, it was like a hundred feet yeah. from where we were. It was I had, not, uh, I had um, earplugs, so I wish I would have known that. Mm -hmm. So well, I told you I brought extra, didn't my, I? No, you didn't tell me that. Oh. Well, my son had to sleep in the hammock with me because my brother brought a tent from Houston but forgot the poles. Or he brought poles, but he brought the wrong poles. And so my son had to try to sleep in a hammock with me, and that was 
hell. Yeah. I'm you convinced that's that what hell is. Well, You're trying yeah. to get to sleep with a young child Pretty much. kicking you in the nads. That's exactly what Jesus Every was time about. he... Boom, boom, yeah. Boom. Gehenna. And he was sweating. It was like a furnace. Gehenna. <laughs> he's, he's a little... I'm already... I got a lot of body heat. Bro, so does he, man. Yeah, Ezra is a furnace, too. And, like, I I had his shirt off because he was in his sleeping bag. And he woke mm-hmm. up, like, because he rolls around. And yeah. He woke up, like, shivering. He was like... Oh. Oh yeah, because yeah. it was sweat. Like, Let me but snatch you cold. up, young man. You know what I mean? Snatched him up, and then he was out. So yeah, yeah you guys got a. When's it? When are you guys going? Doing your thing? Ascending two, weeks. two three weeks. It's about three weeks at this Is point. It? Yep. I thought it was two. It's three. I thought maybe say by saying two weeks, Cal- it, would be it might two happen. Colorado. Yeah. We might really have to like camp in the bush, bro. We're gonna rough it, bro. We might actually have to rough it because we're not like, sure. There's that- gonna be bears. Oh, is that it's not what I said? Gotta get some bear spray. No, I said we would have to poop like bears. Be sure, oh. be because sure because we wouldn't to have access yourself. to facilities. Be sure to check yourself for ticks. Mm-hmm. Okay. The old gonads, check them. Ticks on the legs. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. I didn't think that's where you were going. Use my hand to, to wipe my tears. <laughs> We did it again. We, uh, it. we got good. another uh, Nacho Libre Anyways. quote in there. Anyway, so Der- Derek camping. Shore's just been sitting here. Yeah. Well, you know, honestly, like Derek. Derek, Derek knows what's up. Derek he knew what he was getting into. embodies every fruit of the spirit and more. <laughs> yeah, and even more that are not out there. He is he, definitely we a fruit salad. We <laughs> Spiritual fruit salad. That's <laughs> <laughs> so what's up. We could have talked with for an, without nuts. We could have talked for an hour straight and not acknowledged him. And, and he, he just, just would have been there. so patient. And he would have just smiled and at yep, us. He would have. And then as soon as it, He's it like, hit, our, he would have been I remember like, my first time being a Christian. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I remember when I was immature. <laughs> We'll say something, you big fruit yeah. salad. Uh, like last week. Yeah. yeah. Derek, it's good to have you, man. Welcome yeah, back. Thank you. Welcome what, back. What number is this for you? Uh, four, four or five. Four or five, yeah. yeah. Four or five, huh? Yep. All right. Good stuff. I talk to this guy like every day. Like, I call him in the morning, and he knows. Cause, oh, yeah? Because I'm calling about something. So you call him instead of me because I don't like to answer. Yeah, you never answer. So not never. You don't answer Just not often. Phone? He's like, eh. I'm in the working. morning, the homeboy calls me like 6.50. I was, like who, 50. I was yeah. like, who works at 8 o'clock in the morning? He's like, oh, I was thinking about the Lord this morning. You mean you're, like, not seeking, you're not seeking the face of the Lord at 6.50? <laughs> no. no. Bro, I got no. dust on my forehead by by 6. <laughs> right. I've already been down there doing work. <laughs> All right. What are you playing, earthworms without me? <laughs> It's called Nightcrawlers. Nightcrawlers, sorry. <laughs> That's a uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia reference. Don't watch that show. It's terrible. <laughs> you will lose your salvation if you watch but that show. But do look up the episode where Charlie talks about playing Nightcrawlers. But don't watch it. Fr- Just What's the guy's name? Frank? Frank. Yeah. 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 Anyways. Derek- Why don't we play Nightcrawlers anymore? Derek's here. Yep. <laughs> God. We like Derek. Well, we went whole ham on the on the. Sp- on the Spont- banter. The spontaneity. Yeah. yeah. Spont- that's a good word. Spontaneity. It's an actual word. So. Spontaneity is the past. Yep. So, so Derek, remind remind our listeners who you are and what, what you're into. Um, I'm Derek. Mm-hmm. And I'm a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I pastor a church, Church of the Cross. Just graduated from Friends, so I'm yeah. not there any longer. And, uh, You're pretty excited about that. Yeah, I was excited. You for know, you. spiritual formation is kind of my thing. Yeah. So, you described because I think I asked you like, "What denomination are you?" or something like that, and you described what you guys are, kind of in a really interesting manner. So, can you speed okay, that up? We're we're part of what we call the convergence movement, which is uh, sacramental, charismatic, and evangelical, what? all wrapped into one. So, actual Three streams, one river. Mm-hmm. Sacramental. Sacramental liturgical. Liturgical. Evangelical. Evangelical and, and charismatic. charismatic. And yeah. charismatic. Yeah. With a little twinge of yeah, charisma. So lots of times we get we get might get somebody visiting who had a Catholic background or a Lutheran background or something like that. They're very comfortable in our services. If you if you're a tongue talker and you like to Boogie, we're probably not as boogie as I'd like to be sometimes, but we can get there. Get me in there, man. I'll bring the funk. I know you will. I know that. (laughs) So anyway, yeah, so that's what we do, and uh, we just uh, love the Lord and love to praise Him and seek Him and all that good stuff. Excellent. Uh, Yeah, Derek introduced me to orthodoxy. Oh, yeah? Yeah, dude. Derek is well-read. You're you're probably well-written as well. Mm, more, do you more write written. blogs? Not really. Do you do you write your sermons out? I do. Okay. I do. 
Do you read them word for word? No, um, they're kind 85% of five percent, maybe. Kind I, of a guide. I, they're they're a strong guide because I, I like to be real specific with my right, words. Right, right, right. Makes sense. When I get off, when I get too far sideways, it, what just bit. happened? Yeah, yeah, what just happened a little while ago. <laughs> yeah. like, he said, "I'm trying to <laughs> preach a sermon and teach people about Jesus, not True. be an intro to the Salty Lips <laughs> podcast." Right, <laughs> right. Uh, That's why we lost so many viewers. We should uh, we should call our, our our podcast just get to the point podcast. Yeah, so we can just dive right because in. Because it takes forever. Does get it? There. No, it doesn't. I no. enjoy it. I think Listen, one day we went like fifteen or sixteen minutes of banter. Any podcast that just Not gets any. right to it and just is like, "Hey, what's up? Welcome to the podcast." And today our topic is. I'm like, "Whoa, dude, take me out to dinner first. No. Talk to me. <laughs> yeah, Russell, like, me up. <laughs> you got to butter me up. Man. You know what I mean? Play you're footsies just with me. Going find right a, in there. Find a you're reason to even. touch my hand. And and there's none of that. I like. I oh like a little. A little uh, on the butter. <laughs> and we digress. I like a little vocal play in my podcasts. Yeah. yeah. You know. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of that here. Yeah. You little, wanted to little, say foreplay. Yeah, but I was trying to make it like vocal. Before we make G -ring. little tickling in my ear. Love to your ears. <laughs> I didn't our, say that. <laughs> with our podcast wonderfulness. I'm excited about our topic today. So Dude. our topic is called Setting the Captives Free. And so really, I think we basically had the episode before we hit record, but we can dive yeah. into it well, anyway. Well, but our, 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 I don't know how much... <clears throat> This, I feel like, topic, I remember we were sitting on a back porch and you were just kind of sharing some, your back porch. So you want me to tell the story first? Well, I just would, wanted to say that you were sharing some revelation, and so you can dive into what that was, but I remember you sharing this stuff, what we're going to talk about today, and just some things that have been on your mind, and I was like, dude, this is powerful. Like, this is, this is like, there's freedom here, and there's freedom for a lot of people in this conversation if people can be open-minded to hearing something that may not be um, as popular of a, of a topic. Yeah, well, first of all, when you start talking about like having revelation, the part of the story is like, I've, I heard the Lord say to me, like, I mean, that's pretty much a, that's where I fall. Like, I believe that I communicate with the living God by his spirit in me mm -hmm. <laughs> and that he speaks and reveals things. Um, he uses scripture, but he also uses his voice that is not silent. So, um, so I have, I have struggled in my life. Um, I guess just let me tell. So like I can remember even being five years old. So it goes back this far. So I remember being in kindergarten and like sitting at this table with this girl named Griselda, I still remember her. Griselda? Griselda, wow. yeah. Griselda. Grizzly. That's probably what they named Grizzly. her. Grizzly. Griselda. Yeah. Classic Grizzly. Yeah. Hey, Grizzly. But, but here's the thing. I remember, like, like, we were playing, but we were sitting next to each other, and it was like some it i don't know it in my mind i remember it as being like flirtatious but we were playing and giggling and like i just remember she was giving me attention there was laughing and smiling and that was the first time that i ever remember getting attention from a female in my life and so i remember that and it was probably at that point in time that i had an interest in girls you knew you and i'm talking player. i'm like yeah that's right i was like 5 years old in kindergarten seeing that I'm getting this attention from this female. And so as I, as I grow up and I continue in my life, um, one of the things that was kind of a, I don't know, I guess you call it a struggle. I don't know. I was always chasing the girl. I was always looking for a relationship. Um, at one point I got into, you know, alcohol and drugs and all of that was because I was hanging with a group of people who were doing that. And I felt like if I can indulge in those things that it might have a foot in the door for me to have a relationship with, with a girl that I liked or whatever. So at an early age, I started looking at attention from women as a thing that like brought me joy. And I, I guess fulfillment at, at some point and, you know, in some way, shape or form. Fast forward and now I'm, I'm married. And what I'm realizing is that all of those experiences and this idea of love and attention and affection and acceptance, um, has come with me throughout the entirety of my lifetime into my relationship with my wife. Now, um, the way that my wife shows love isn't necessarily the way that I've always 
desire to be shown at the entirety of my life. So then right. there's a disconnect, right? Like of an expectation that I've placed on my wife and then that's not becoming a reality. And so, um, there's problems, right? Like in my heart, in my mind, there's this huge disconnect. A lot of this stuff at certain points in time had turned into, uh, lust and pornography and that kind of thing, looking for that acceptance or whatever it is. Um, and so running into some issues with that sin, um, throughout, throughout time, but all of it going back to this idea of love and acceptance. So I've cried out. I've prayed the prayers. I've done the things. I've talked to the friends. I've gone to the conferences. I've done the men's retreat. I've done all that stuff. And I've been in this place where it's like, God, I hate myself. I hate my sin. I hate this. I hate this. This is stupid. Take it away. Change me. This, that, and the other. And I felt very clearly just a couple of weeks ago. It, and I'm going to say this and we can dissect it, but I felt like the Lord said, like, essentially, you keep you keep owning that sin as though it's yours and that it's your fault, but you've fallen victim to the enemy and you've believed a lie about love your entire life. And so he was basically saying like, your sin doesn't exist because I eradicated it on the cross. And so if you keep holding on to that, um, things are never going to change essentially, essentially because I'm powerless to change myself. And so if I keep, thinking that this is mine, well, then it's like mine to deal with. Right. So where all this kind of boils down to is the revelation that I had is I felt like the show, the Lord showed me the entirety of my life where I gave into a lie of the enemy about what love was and what acceptance was. And so then that just kind of took root. And then I've existed my entire life seeing love through a lens that is a false mm. lens. And so I've given into a lie and a narrative. I've been deceived. And so therefore I'm a victim of that deception. And so when the Lord basically was just like, I set the captive free. I redeem all that has been stolen, destroyed and killed through my abundant life. It was just like this crazy thing that happened. And I was like, I feel like I'm repenting of sin right now because the way that I'm thinking about sin is changing. Okay, different. Yeah. yeah, it's different. And that's what repentance is. It's right. thinking Renewal, differently about it. of your mind. You know, yeah. So I was having this like slave mentality, this like culprit mentality, like I'm a terrible person. I'm just a piece of crap. I can't stop sinning. I can't stop lusting. I can't stop this. I can't stop that. Like... You know, and then just living in this shame and guilt my entire life. And so I want to talk about that idea of like victimhood and not like in a, not like in this, like, oh, you know, everybody is a victim or, um, you know, the victim mentality. Some people, they just never see. Well, they, they, never, they, they feel like they're owed something. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean? But truly. So let's, let's just take it back to the garden and then, and then you guys can kind of dive in because. Um, yeah, so we see that in the garden, you've got the serpent that was craftier than all of the other animals or whatever, and he comes and he presents an idea to Eve, and he basically says, like, if you eat of this fruit, well, then you will be like God, and then ask the question, did God really say? Yeah, so there's, that's the deception. Did God right. really say? Yeah, questioning whether or not God actually said what he said. So then, you know, well, did he? And so then this, so Eve falls to the deception of the serpent and then eats of the fruit. So my question then at that point is, is this, is it her fault that she sinned or was she deceived by an enemy or was it both? I mean, I just open it up for. I think you, whenever we were chatting about it, you used the phrase or the words, um, victim, like victim to the thief. And we got on this whole conversation about the thief and how in scripture, a lot of times it's, you know, there's a thief that's, that's referenced and we view that thief as the thief being Satan. 
And then you had mentioned to me a quote that you heard from someone. I don't know if you were going to get into this a little bit later, but I think it goes it, it goes with this topic. Um, you heard you were you heard a good friend talking, and he was kind of talking about something like this, and he dropped this statement, basically defining what a thief is. Because when we see the word thief, we think Satan, the devil, you know, whatever. Um, and here's what that phrase was. Anything that enters your life that hasn't entered through the gate of Christ is the thief meant to steal, kill and destroy. So that, right. that thief being anything, not just the thief, the one. Um, right. And it has to do with. So this was the issue in the garden. I think there's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Then there's the tree of life. And then, of course, there's Yahweh in his presence with them, among them in the garden. And so he gives them a command and then something comes along and questions that. And then they eat of the tree that that he said, if you eat of it, you will die. Um, but it's knowledge of good and evil. And so it was them veering from or getting away from the source of life and knowledge and all things good. And then figure, essentially eating something that then puts them on the path to figure that out themselves. So then no longer sourcing from Yahweh, the creator and knower of all things, the wise one. And bearer of eternal life. Bearer of eternal life. But then they take on this the burden of trying to sort this out for themselves, not being led by, by Yahweh, by his spirit, by his presence, by the relationship, which is where we're meant to learn and grow and exist. And so the narrative got twisted and then they believed this lie and then there was separation from Yahweh. And so then it, they just continued on that path. And so what I'm saying is that at some point in my life, I began to believe certain lies and, and, fall under deception of what true love actually was so that I get to a place in my life and I've got years and years and years of deception and years and years and years of victimhood of a false narrative of what love is. Mm. And so, um, you're not alone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but First off, I'd have to say that. I mean, that's a, you're, you're not alone in that. That's yeah. a huge issue. So, I mean, it, it took me crying out to the Lord one morning, like, what the heck? Something's got to change. And it was as though he just said, hey, look, you're, you're a victim and I've come to rescue you. Mm -hmm. And that was like, number one, it took the burden off of myself to be the one to help myself to not sin or whatever, to be freed from this, these actions, this mentality, this narrative, these lies, this mindset. You, you literally felt freedom. I did. You, you felt, and this yeah. is, and this is, and it was all taking place. I would imagine in in the mind. You're having, you know, the Lord speaking to you, and then that repentance when you're, you know, your mind is literally doing a 180. You're seeing something in a way that you've never seen, I've never it, before, seen it before, it's heard it before, eyes, experienced before. Um, but you look at the source that it's coming from. You know, with, right. with Yahweh. And so when this happens and you get this fresh word, it's almost like the blinders drop. It, you know, it's almost like imagine, um, and I had used this analogy of, of, um, of a woman who is in an abusive relationship and, and she, almost has Stockholm syndrome or the person has mm -hmm. Stockholm syndrome and they begin to um, believe whatever their captor is saying or, or empathize with their captor and all this kind of stuff. And so it's almost like in, in that moment, you know, when there's, cause there's a moment for women who are in these situations to whether that can be, doesn't matter how many times their friends or loved ones tell them you are in a bad spot. You need to get out of it. It, there's a switch that has to happen internally. Sometimes people speak of having this divine revelation from God to then they go, wow, I just saw the situation for what it was, but it was almost like in this situation, the curtain fell and you saw what was really going on. And it's like, oh my gosh, I've actually, I'm actually a victim. Like, God's here to set me free. Like he's come to set the captives free, but our whole lives as Christians, and we can get into this a little bit about, well, you know, when does, how does this work with sin? Is this with all? So we can get into that in a little bit, but for most of our lives, we've been told this is your fault. You mm -hmm. own it from the pulpit. Right. You know, all of this, like your sin is dirty. God can't even look at you. And I'm not saying everyone says this, but this is a pretty popular it's a narrative. It's a narrative that yeah. exists to where it's like, you know, you're a filthy rat. God spit, you know, all of this kind of thing. And so yeah. we view ourselves as this disgusting, torn up, right. broken thing. And so all of that, I think, is good intentioned to turn people back 
hopefully to God, but there's a lot of damage that happens there. Yeah. That, and I think, that's he, not good. I think although like good intention in their, in their mind, but not necessarily in the heart because the road to hell was paved by good, good intentions. intentions. Right. That's a tr- and that's true, you know, and also, you know, what, what we do when we say that, or when we've propagated that type of mentality or that type of verbiage in people's lives, it gives them a false understanding of what conviction is. Now I listened to Judah Smith recently, uh, with my buddy Keith, uh, and he was saying about, you know, that sin is like what you said, it is, it is taken care of. It's either, it's either all gone or it's not or at it's all, not. Yeah. you know what I mean? And so what he was saying was because the wrath of God was satisfied, it's that debt is paid. All the sins you have committed will commit all of them. I mean, even sins you have not committed yet, that is all paid for. And so why would the Holy spirit, you, if it's paid for, why would he be putting that on you as guilt and shame and things like he's that? He's not. actually convicting you of righteousness. That's oh, not, that's not wow. you. Wow. That's not you. That's not you. Wow. So there, yeah. So we've been, we've been spitting this and, 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 and that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Wow. So it's he almost like we've been saying that God's, God's saying it's the sin that's the issue when God is saying, Hey, this isn't who you are. Correct. Dude, it, it, because it's taken care of. And so, and, and, th- and that's, that goes to law too, because we, we got to understand not only are we free from sin and death, we are free from the law. Right. When he right. said it is for freedom that you have been set free. No yeah. longer go back to a yoke of slavery. Right. He's talking about slavery to the law. Right. You know, and I was reading Watchman Nee recently, a normal Christian life. And he was saying that the point of freedom comes when we absolutely read like that Romans eight moment, when he's talking about wretched man that I am, when uh-huh. we come to the point, like what you were saying, I, you're like, God, I hate this. I yep. hate this. I hate this. There's that point that happens. Mm-hmm. And he was, it was a point in Paul's life. That's a defining moment. Oh, wretched man that I, I am, am, who will save me right. when you have exhausted all of your efforts. that's mm-hmm. when he can pick up. Yeah. And so what he was saying, was that when you purpose in your heart and you understand freedom from the law and the law of sin and death that works in you, you're not, you're like, I am no longer going to even try to please God. Yeah. That way the spirit does that for you because it's God. It, it says, he said the keeper of the, or the, the, the maker of the law is also the, is he who keeps it, you know? And so that's a freeing thing. You're free yeah. from sin. You're free from right. the law. You're so, free from trying to please him like that, you it, know, and it's it, mentalities and narratives like we were saying. Right. I, Derek, are you, you got anything rumbling around in there? I have a few things, but I want to give you an Go opportunity. Ahead. Go ahead. So a lot of times we talk about like, you're a sinner, you're wretched, you're fully like total uh, depravity. Like there's no good in you. You can never do anything good. Tulip with a capital T. Tulip with a capital T. Right. Exactly. And, and so we're like, we, we are unknowingly propagating that lie of shame and guilt as if I need more shame and guilt about right. my sin. Give me a freaking break. Like I know the wretched man that I am. Don't get me wrong. And I have tried over and over and over according to the law that was work with at work within me to try and stop sinning in certain ways so that the Lord would be pleased exactly. with me, which is not the gospel at right. all. And so rather than saying you're a sinner, you need to be righteous. What we're talking about is the Lord speaking identity over us in Christ. You are the righteousness right, of God. Right. So why do you continue to sin? Exactly. So that, not, that's not, different. That, that's not, a different message. Yeah. And that's and that's life by the spirit. That's walking by the spirit. That's the law of the spirit at work in you because mm-hmm. the, where there's a, where there was once a law, it is the law. Like, so even in the law of the land, you know, in our physical realm until another law comes and usurps that law that is greater than that law that was already passed. And mm-hmm. so the law of, you know, of, of sin and death, the law itself, the, the law of the spirit has come. And now we are under that. This law is no longer, we are no longer held to that standard. Christ lived that standard for us. Right. He, and you know, people, people are like, God hates sin so much much. And I know that God loathes certain things, but typically it, I don't know. There's just not a, people, there's just a tone that right. comes across, but he hated it so much. It's not that he hated you because you're a sinner. He hated the sin so much that Jesus actually became sin on our behalf. Right. Right. God hated sin so much. Jesus became sin so that we might be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So, I mean, that's how much he hated it. He became it and then defeated it. All part of, as Paul said, reconciling the world back to himself. Mm-hmm. Right. 
that's how much he loved right. us. Yes. Not so, just some judicial matter, right? but truly being able to be put back into a right place of, right. of complete so, community, complete yes, connection. Communion, connection. So I just think the message in one sense is like, I've lived my life full of guilt and shame. And there have been times where I have preached about sin passionately because I hated it so much in myself, but I wasn't free from it. And one of the reasons I was so passionate, one of the, one of the reasons that I wept so much as I preached about these things was because of all the guilt and the shame that right. I was experiencing. So I would preach freedom in Christ and I would weep as a slave oh, as I was preaching man. freedom in Christ. Woo. Because I wasn't free and I knew it, but I wanted it so badly that I would, I would cry. Yeah. And, and so I think that, you know, to, to maybe some people who roll in a different thinking crowd that, you know, I, th I think the, the opposite viewpoint of this is somebody might sound something a little like this. No, you guys, you guys are missing the mark. No, our sin is d d this and that. And it start again, harping on just the disgustingness of sin. And then maybe the question that someone might pose in, in that camp might sound something like, well, where does your responsibility of the sin yeah, come into play? Let's talk about because that. I think that that's where, you know, you look at that and you, you don't just want to throw all responsibility of sin off of the table. But I, I, I don't even know if responsibility is the right word. It's not. But but that's the word that I know you guys yeah, understand people what will I say, get when I'm, saying, oh, well, yeah, when I'm saying that. Yeah, absolutely. And and I'm, am I interrupting you, Derek? Or are you thinking? No, go ahead. It looks like it hurts. <laughs> it does. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and, and I, you know, I try not to take offense to that when people say that kind of stuff, because, and you know, I've had long conversations with Derek. I've had long conversations with Jason about this. Okay. Responsibility, consequence of action. Yes. Um, but those are different things. Those two words, those two, yeah. the phrase right. consequence of action and responsibility, the tone of those are different. Right. Um, but in my mind, when I was a slave to these things, you know, it was, Man, I lost my train, dude. Because I was. What laughing. makes a slave? What 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 is is a characteristic of of someone who is a slave to sin? Is it literally your mindset? It's because I feel like even we've had some conversations to where you've talked about recently how your mindset here, has shifted. Here's a, here's what a slave is. No matter how hard they try and will themselves into freedom, they're they powerless be, to do because so because they're owned by something else. Right. You know, they are owned by something else. And, and so, so what, we I was are getting, slaves. What, what, what I was getting at is, are you a slave to sin if you still sin? Or are you a slave to sin if you feel hopeless and like you will never, you cannot imagine a life free? Both. I, I mean, would say I, both. Right. I, think I mean, I would say both. Go and, ahead. And I, I would say both in a sense, although I think the second is, is sadder. Right. To me, the first right. is the guy that just recognizes, you know, there's just something in this world where I have this kind of natural pennant to want to go off on my own rather on the path that I should go. Yeah. But I recognize that. I correct that. I, I, I'm not that doesn't completely dissuade me. Right. Then that second, that shame driven life, mm. it's just it just rules wow. you. I, you know, I think of the life. I think of the. Uh, Golem creature. That, oh yeah, yeah. That from Lord of the Rings. From Lord yeah. of the Rings. Mm -hmm. You know, well, a be the beautiful guy who found the ring. But you know, and then when we really come across him in the oh, story, man. he's just this. He's just this decrepit. You know, dude. What a sad. What a spiritual visualization that is probably reflects so many of us at different points in our mm -hmm. lives, you know, in that spirit, if we're a tripart being body, soul, spirit, that, that spiritual representation, that imagery of, of that being yeah. bad, you know, like and that so is he's, sad. He is, he is, uh, you know, he's worthy of having feelings for, of, of sadness for, and that's, that's really uh, that wages of sin is, uh, is death thing and responsibility. Yeah. There's probably people that take license, but if I've tasted the good love of God, if I've if mm -hmm. I've had life in Christ, I'm not wasting. I, I'm I'm not going back to something. Now my narrative may drive me back to something, but that's and I have a responsibility. But again, I think it's more the consequences 
may come to bear. Yeah. But the reality right. is that, man, I'm on a pathway to death, and that's got to make the Savior's heart ache worse than anything. Because, again, he's he came to set us free, mm -hmm. and here I am Not living falling victim yeah. to this false yeah. narrative and walking Oh, walking this other path yeah. Yeah. that leads to destruct to my destruction. Yeah. So, the other day we were um, we were outside in our front yard, and since it's been nicer, we spend a lot of our family spends a lot of time outside these days, which is really nice. So, my daughter, who's going to be four years old in a couple of weeks, um, she is just she's she, she loves to play. She's like so full of joy. She's like, I mean. Yeah, I just I love watching her play. I love mm. watching her grow and and laugh and you know sometimes it's innocence. It gets, yeah, it's, it's innocence. Beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's so wonderful to just watch. Um, and so the other day we're all sitting on the on the porch, and there's a lip because there's a, a a wheelchair ramp that goes up, and she grabbed the ball and she was running to bring it to mom or somebody and she trips over the lip of this thing Ouch. and like almost she was like an inch away from hitting her forehead on concrete Oof. and uh and she didn't and i was like oh man that was close well we told her honey you, you have to watch out for that lip or you, you're gonna fall you have to be careful like hey we want you to play once you have a good time but you just have to be careful and be aware of this thing and so teaching moment trying to make her aware hey i don't want you to hurt yourself in this regard well then she does it again 10 minutes later and so i had just in a moment said hey teaching lesson understand this like you're gonna hurt yourself don't do it again she heard the words she felt the pain and then she did it again so why and so as a parent all i can do is comfort her in that and then speak to her again and tell her, hey, you really have to watch it. And, you know, over and over until she matures enough to be aware of the lip of the wheelchair ramp so that she doesn't fall down and hit herself. I think that has a lot to do with our maturity spiritually. Like, why are you, why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Stop hitting yourself. For some reason, we keep going back to the things that causes pain and hurt us in our lives. And the Lord being a good and loving, patient, caring father, isn't like beating us up because we're hurting ourselves, right? He's not propagating shame and guilt and pain in our life and saying like, you know, you're so stupid. You're such an idiot. You need to stop doing that. There's just like this, this, this godly patience, right? God is not, what do they say? God is not patient like some of you think patience or whatever it is. Um, patience like gritting your teeth like. Yeah, like, like yeah, he's, oh, he's, or I can't remember what it says, but it says he's patient. Um, do you not, you know, don't take it for granted. His kindness is meant to lead you to repentance, right? So he's withholding because he doesn't want anybody to perish. So there's like a, a bridling of, uh, of wrath, I suppose, because he wants us to, to come to him. Um, but what I'm saying is like, I could easily, I mean, am I going to like, my daughter's already hurt. She fell and hit her knee. Am I going to pick her up, get mad at her because she fell again and like spank her and cause more pain on top of pain? And so what I'm getting at is like, we tend to look at people through eyes that aren't the eyes of the Lord. And when we see them yeah. causing pain and hurt in their lives because of the sin, we want to get mad. And then we want to try and cause them to experience so much pain that it's going to cause them to never do it again, except sometimes there's just an immaturity that exists that is going to take a kind and patient father walking with them every single step of the way, being there to comfort them and to um, soothe them every time that these things happen. And so I can say that that is my experience with the Lord. I mean, let, let's just talk about lust. Like I probably have lusted over a woman a million times in my life. And a million and one, the Lord is going to still say, I love you and I'm patient with you. You know, I mean, and so somewhere we've, there's a disconnect and somehow we've begun to propagate that shame and that guilt 
narrative in people's lives like you suck you're terrible you need to change situation but how much more freeing is it than if we begin to say hey you've like help them understand the narrative that they've believed that was a lie and then right. get them connected with the father to then begin to replace what was taken to redeem and restore because that's a defeated mindset and a defeated mindset will cause you to live a defeated life right you know yeah. and <clears throat> um right i mean yeah no no i i agree man i was i was just gonna say gosh until you experience like the heart of the father like that it's going to be really hard to communicate that that love that you've experienced and so i wonder if the man and i hate i'm not trying to place blame on any sort of leader in a ministry position but i have to question the methods and the ways that at which i've spoken my other pastor friends have spoken you know and, and have been led to spoken it's kind of this like generational thing that for generations and generations we've spoke about the father's thoughts towards this subject and in that subject is meant to be sin, but it ends up being us. And so right. it's like this friendly fire thing. And so while we're speaking mm. of maybe God's detest of sin, there's like this friendly fire that happens to where I would it, say so. it like it hits the wrong thing and it hits us. And so it, until, yeah. uh, you know, a clergy person or someone has experienced that freedom, that love, that patient father right. walking with them through these seasons. I mean, y you know, now when you're, when you're talking with Henry and, and he comes up to you and, and let's say you guys are having a real deep conversation, I think you are a lot more, or even Illy, you know, you are a lot more likely to display and communicate that love and patience um, from the father, like when you're speaking yes. of God, because you've, you've experienced right. it. Yeah. I would so, say so. I, I don't know. I mean, so, my, that's where my, that, those are where my thoughts go. Like how many people have I unintentionally wounded, injured, wounded or kicked while they were down, right? When they were down, miscommunicated. I'm not trying to have a little guilt thing or any pity party or anything, but that's where my mind goes or placed burdens on and, an already burdened people. Right. Dude. You know, right. The Pharisees, right? They I put mean, burdens on people that were like, too we heavy know to we carry. suck. You know what I mean? Now yeah. you're like, like, I mean, like they you walk just digging it in. How about how much more I suck? You they, know what I mean? They walk like, up and they don't have a yoke and yet on. You don't, and yet you and don't lift a finger the to help them. Pharisees slap a yoke right on them. And it's like, right. Jesus, you know, going back to the beginning of the season, who put that yoke on you? Mm -hmm. You know, where'd you get that yoke from? Yoke from? My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Like, I, I think of the woman caught in adultery. Right. I love the that Pharisees story. standing around. Ready and to throw some She wasn't though. adultering by herself. Right. <laughs> right. Somebody was there and that somebody was around. Right. I'm pretty sure. Right. And Jesus apprehends that situation. He knows there's a law on the books that yes, they can justifiably do this to her. But he also knows that she wasn't by her. You know, there's somebody, somebody there was with her. Yeah. And I love how he just cuts right through the pharisaical urge. Okay. Yeah. You guys have every right to do this. So whoever of you doesn't have, mm -hmm. is, is righteous enough to cast the stone, doesn't have sin. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. And right. even they, at that moment, seem to finally get it enough to, well, we can't. We can't. Well, the, the the beautiful message of that story that I love so much is that the what does he ask the woman? Not have you sinned? That's right. Do you, he doesn't say, "Did you sin?" You know, do you Come feel on. do you feel bad for that yeah. sin? Do you wish you would have never done that? Do you promise that you'll never go and do that again? Now he does address it, and he does acknowledge his sin, and he does say, "Go and sin no more," but. The answer to her issue was not go and sin no more. The answer to her issue was, am I going to be condemned for this sin? And Jesus represents what he's all about in that moment and says, has no one condemned you? Neither, Neither do, do I, I condemn you. Mercy, mercy now, triumphs over Now judgment. go and leave your life of sin. Yeah. So it is the freedom That's from condemnation and consequence right. of the sin. Well, you know, consequence of sin. She was having consequences. Yeah. But it was the freedom from the condemnation, the judgment, and the death of the sin that was the freedom 
to pave the way for her to go and leave the sin. It's interesting to me that cons- the consequence was only going to happen through human hands. The consequence wasn't going to. The consequence snap. wasn't going to come because Jesus was going to administer that. The consequence mm. was going to come by those who had who wanted to throw the stones. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, so when we talk about consequence, we talk about. I think it's because we have a lack of grace, a lack of love, a lack of the Father's heart, a lack of the Father's eyes to see people. Like you said, these are not the sin. It's sin, not the sinner. You know what I mean? You can't ever. You got to. We we have to do a better job of separating the right. person from their sin. We right. Cannot, yeah, and that's what we, I was getting. We there. reinforce because that that's, because that because that's you know, that's again that is a, yeah, that's yeah. putting burdens on people. And what do taskmasters do to their slaves? They put burdens on them. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. are we burdening? We're enslaving people, giving them that mentality, giving them that yoke, rather than letting them, or rather than giving mercy. Bro, but listen, we've we've been told to put those burdens on yeah. people. We've been told Absolutely. to call out sin, and and but you're right, Derek, when you're talking about distinguishing that sin from the like the person not letting the identity, because what ends up happening is is we the way that we've been taught to communicate that is identity based or identity driven and so it's like they kind of mesh i even like the way that story is presented as the woman who's caught in adultery not the, not the, not the adulterous. adulterous woman right yeah right. so ah, and, and yeah. the go and sin no more is a set is a freedom not a mm-hmm. finger wag yeah right. of judgment right right it's you're free it, so let's talk about that because what narrative did she believe that may have led her into a place of committing adultery, right? Like what, where, where at her point in her, at what point in her life did she begin to believe a false narrative worthlessness probably. about love or, you know, in right. to get to a point to where she wants to commit adultery? What, I mean, there's what one were of the her thousand un- million narratives that right. could have taken place. Well, Perhaps I, I need it. I, I need to get taken care of. I can't do this on exactly. my own. I mean, like, even in that society, like, you know, being identified with, with a man and, you know, maybe she was just like, I, I need someone to take care of me and I, you know, need a family to take me in. Maybe I'm the mistress or the second wife or, you know, trying to make a life for herself. Because it was, it, and it was a pleasure wh- thing, too. And finding pleasure in those things rather sure. than finding in pleasure in the one that gives pleasure. You yeah. Know what I mean, and so um, where we're where we're, you know like I said, seeking those things yeah. like our compulsive behaviors mm-hmm. being sought because we're not grounded and rooted yeah. in him. Yeah. You know, so with, with false narratives, right? Like what you're saying, <coughs> our false mentality about God, mm-hmm. you know, and, and again, I keep on saying it, man, like we need him to show us who he's not, you know what I mean? So that we can find out who he is. Right. You like, know? yeah, I, I think, you know, when we, when we personalize this and Jason, man, I just want to, I just want to thank you for, sharing, you know, as much as you did and, and being vulnerable. I think it takes a lot of bravery to hop on a mic on Facebook live, Instagram live, and, and on Apple, yeah. Spotify, everywhere else you have our podcast. Go Floating out, worldwide, baby. Right. And, and to share that. So, man, I just want to thank you for that because I know that takes a, a boldness and a, and a, a different set of, a different type of freedom, a different mindset to be able to share that. Um, but, but I even think about what you've shared. And then, you know, when we're talking, since we're talking about the woman caught in adultery, You know, how many times had she maybe felt in her life, and this is speculation, you know, we're speculating in the text right now, but had she felt in her life, I'm sure she's at least once reconsidered and thought, man, I don't know if this is right. Maybe this isn't good. Mm -hmm. And maybe wanted, wanted to stop. But for whatever reason, whether that was, I need food or money to survive, I need whatever that is to where she knew it was wrong. Other people told her it was wrong. Maybe the people that she was with told her it was wrong. But it was only until she had this interaction with Jesus hmm. and, and she, she, this intimate interaction right. that was different, that probably changed her mindset hmm. and set her up and positioned her to truly go and sin no more. And I think ex- about it was the experience, is the experience. Right. And that's the difference in your story as well. How, how long have you and I and everyone else around this table ward fought hmm. against it, whatever type of sin is in our life that we yeah. wanted to get rid of. But it is only until Jesus in your case. And I think in our cases opens that, that dungeon door and says, bro, you are free. Right. Like I've, 
I've come to set you free. And there that, is, it's there, that whole deal. There's an experiential part of this, too, because even in my life, like recently, you know, with everything that I've gone through, I experienced something, you know, and I talking to talking to Derek the other day. He's like, man, I don't think you're going back. I was like, I don't think I'm going back either. Bro, bro. but how you many times I mean? have you had the knowledge of, of knowledge, whatever? Yeah. You know, knowledge like, never set you, me free. Exactly. It actually, exactly. It actually did, its, did its part to keep me bound <laughs> because it was all here, right? Yeah. Yep. Until the heart experiences something with God. And, that, it, and, and, and that's another thing that, I, that I've been thinking on a lot lately, too. It is God's work, man. Yes. It is His. Right. And He either does it or He, do, or he does it. He does mm -hmm. it or right. He doesn't. So, you know, at, at, everything has its proper time. And I, you know, yeah, like, I cannot get past the yeah. experience of it because it was the experience with Jesus that changed people's lives, not hearing about him. Right. Oh, he's in the next town over. Oh, I'm free. It wasn't like that. <laughs> dude. You know what I mean? Dude, hey, did you hear perfect. Jesus is in the next yeah. city? Oh, I'm free. I'm Whoa. Free. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, exactly. no, you got to experience that and experience. Can you imagine? I can imagine looking in his eyes being that woman. Oh, man. You know what I mean? Can you imagine the grace and the mercy and the kindness it, that was that's bestowed? What, the kindness and gentleness that really strikes me in that. Yeah. In that. Well, it's because Jesus sees people. I mean, if you think about, is, is it, what's the Isaiah chapter, maybe 53, where it talks about, you know, the, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for I've come to yeah, preach the good yeah. news to the poor, to it's heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. Um, he knew his mission. He knew he was coming to a people who had been bound by the law, right, who had yeah. been um, burdened by the Pharisees, the religious people who were supposed to be, you know, entrusted with guarding, and, right, guarding representing and, Yahweh's yes, heart yeah. to the people and completely, totally missing it. <laughs> and so, you know, he shows up and so he sees sin, but he sees the captivity behind it. And so imagine if we just began to see people through a new through a new lens rather than like being judgmental and upset about the sin that they're committing. What if we actually saw the heart behind it? And this is how when we talked about last episode about, you know, this is the only way that enemies ever become friends is is when there's nothing to lose. Essentially, there's no offense right. to be had. For some reason, we still carry around a right to get offended by people right. doing evil things. Right. And so then we have a heart that is against them rather than a heart that's for them. So rather than desiring true freedom from the thing that has plagued them their entire life, that has led them to the point we to where they're at, to we want them to be punished and changed. Right. Right. But that's our heart for them. Right. That's yeah. Our heart that's is punishment not. and therefore punishment will change, man. And like, dude, the love conquers the multitude of sins, you know, and that conquering, Yikes. right? And so that mentality, right? Like, how can we reproduce that mentality in people? It's by loving and it's by being Christ to people, you know, because once you, because, con because in that defeatist mindset, like we were talking about, you'll continue on in that. If that's what you believe and if that's what people heap on you, you're worthless, this and this and that, it's only going to, it's a self prophecy Absolutely. that works in your life. But when we For flip the script, Right. Do it the kingdom way and love our enemies. You can't you can't emotionally love your enemy. It's not possible. You know, love is a choice. It's something it's an uh, empowering, empowering choice. And I believe that that sets people free because it did, mm -hmm. you know. So here's what's different in my life today, because I had this experience and, you know, I was telling Christopher about it. He was there at my house and I was like excited about Jesus and what he did for me for probably one of the first times in my life, like <laughs> rather than just regurgitating things I've heard about him or things that I've read in the scripture, like I'm like, he told me it's not my sin that he paid the debt that he died for me. And he's came to set me free because I've been, you know, that's, uh, that's, a slave. That's good news, bro. It, that's good that's news. Gospel. That is great stinking news. That's gospel. Right. It's great news. Um, so here's, what's different is that when I see, tendencies because I, I still, I am in process of replacing narrative that I've believed my entire life. So every part of my being, look, I'm tripart, I'm, I'm, I'm spirit, uh, body and, and soul. And we know that our brain, you were talking earlier, you were talking about chemicals, right? So oh, yeah, my brain, gonna, you got to hit on that my brain bit. has been wired physiologically to expect and to experience love through touch and through affection, that that's how I receive love. Now, it may, might be a form of how people show love, but it's not true love, right? right? Um, 
So true love is from the father. So I'm having a narrative replaced. So when I have sin manifest in my life now, I don't look at it and think, gosh, I got to get that under control. I look to the Lord and I say, no. I say, Lord, what part of me is still experiencing pain or trauma or what part of me needs healing that you want to speak to? Because that that's a symptom. The sin is a symptom of that false narrative right. still be existing and manifesting. So I'm not like, oh, you know, I, I should probably go ahead and put the blockers on my computer and do this, that, and the other and get an accountability partner. And, and I mean, it's good to set up boundaries. If you need to do that, do that. But I'm not trying to figure out how to stop sinning anymore. No. Right, because it's I am yours. asking the Lord to continue to teach me and show me the narrative that I'm to believe about who I am and what he did for me and bring healing and replace the thoughts that caused me to sin in the first place. Man, it's so, it's so different. It's completely different. So different. <clears throat> and, and what I think, gosh, what gets me, I'm sitting here and I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the emotions of all of this because it's like, I just ask myself the question, like, well, sometimes I wonder, and this has nothing to do with like church or, or Western mindsets. Easter, like this has nothing to do with that or like methodology as much as it is like <clears throat> the personhood of Jesus and who he is. And like, gosh, there's so much freedom in this. What if when someone came to the Lord, however, with whatever method happened, instead of saying, Hey, here's the first thing that you need to do. And we send them on this knowledge acquiring journey, right. the, the knowledge, I mean, that, that some of that stuff is good that, that, I mean, I'm not knocking it. Yeah. Well, but, I mean, but if it, instead of it being the first thing that we start to shove down people's throats by, Hey, you need to read this book, do this study da da da. that's like, we found a way to literally introduce them to the person of Jesus so that they could begin to have these experiential moments with Jesus to where he's leading to where he's guiding. I was talking to Lara the other day and we were talking about how Jesus now he brings healing and, and not once in the Bible does he, does he say, um, like, this is the way that you cast out every demon. This is the way that you may do every healing. It's, I mean, he was always changing it. And, and, and there's, there's multiple ways that we see it in the scriptures. And I'm sure that there were hundreds or if not thousands of other ways that are not recorded in scripture that he did a healing. Now, if he did all of that stuff, it makes me think that each way that he sets a captive free is going to look a little bit different because of the different shackles or the chains it's or the cage or the yeah. dungeon yeah. or the whatever. Yeah. And so how can we figure out how to literally make the introduction? Because that's what I think the start of the Christian life is, is making the introduction to Jesus and then giving people the freedom while walking alongside them to continually seek his voice and do whatever he says. Mm -hmm. It sounds so simple. But it's hard to figure out how to – I think it's hard for people to trust what they're feeling when it comes to whatever Jesus, however he's leading you to you know, break free from this captivity or however he busted you out or what life on the other side of the gate or the prison cell is. Mm -hmm. Because that's what this is. You're figuring out what Freedom. life outside of the shackles is. Right. I mean I'm sure you know, getting back to slavery, these people had to figure out a whole new way to live life, right. a whole new way of living. Right. One of the things that I, I think of, there's a concept called the vicarious humanity of Christ. Where Say that again. There, a concept called the vicarious humanity of Christ. Oh, okay. Where in Christ's life, we find, we find the perfect human, humanity. In, in his living, we have the example, we have the representation of, 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 of the way we sh can live. It's, right. it's available to yeah. us. He experienced the pain we did. He, he was victimized tremendously, uh, experienced resurrection, and yet that life, his life becomes part of our lives. And so we walk, we, we walk, um, our journey as though he were walking our journey in in that sense yeah and that's available and i think one of the things you hit on was when you're especially when you're talking about being with somebody you said walk with them and i think that that's a super key we have in tech issue yeah that's a yeah, super key it. is walking with them yes you know it's not just say go do this go read this go let's walk together because relationship. Yes. Well, Let's restore narratives is, by learning what 
the narrative should should be should. right. And if we are in Christ and Christ is in us and He's one with the Father, therefore we are one with the Father in walking with other people. We are walking as Christ to yes. them, not yes. because we are Christ, but because Christ lives in us. The Spirit lives in us, and when we walk with them, we are literally being Christ to that person, right? And what did Jesus say about if you know nobody can see the Father? Unless he looks upon the sun, well, we are sons. Absolutely. You know, we are wow. absolutely sons of God. And when when they look at mm. us and they see the fruit in our life of the Spirit, because Christ's life is manifesting and dwelling within us, they are seeing the Father because Christ is living in us, man. Yeah, that's you know, huge. And walking with them as Christ. You know, but it's too messy, man. That's the problem. It's too messy. It is, yeah. It's too messy. Yeah. I don't want to do it. I don't have time for it. You know, my wants, my desires come before other people, man. We got to get past that. And me no. even too, you know what I mean? Because I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of wanting yeah. my little time, of not wanting to be, you know, bothered. Ugh. But man, like there are people, and I think that that's, that's a, that's a, that's a heart change for us. You know what I mean? That yeah. There are people that are dying and especially, so that's one of the reasons for the ministry that we're starting is because. And I talked to Derek about this too. God has put a burning desire in my heart for people who are going through addiction, yeah. who are going through depression, who are going through divorce. Like, and it's and that's a burning desire. And how else can you have that burning desire? You know what I mean? It's that being um, fireborn. You got to fireborn, man. You've got to. And like, it's like, man, like I want those people to be free because I know how it felt to yeah. be that person. Right. You, you know what I mean? And I don't want that. Once. Exactly. And so, and so, yeah. You know, the best way to to learn a free life. Life is to go to a, cap, a, a, a cap, or used to be captive. Well, how do you live a free life? Well, let me show you. You yeah. know what I mean? And so when we get around other people, we walk with well, them. That's how it, you know. That's how we, but we you, re reproduce freedom. You know what that is? That's called making disciples. And so Jesus comes, and I'm not talking about making disciples in the way that we think making disciples. Right. It is if literally we think of making Christians. It, it, yeah, right, right. yeah. We'll, we'll go back to what were you telling me about the other day. There's a difference between disciples and Christians, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm yeah. certain of it. When we were talking about the order, you know, the order of go. Right. And <clears throat> so there's the scripture, and I can't remember where, but read your Bible, you find it. <laughs> um, it Google, start, start Google the disciple or something. Yeah, start at the beginning. No, um, there's the scripture that talks about when Jesus called his disciples to be with him that they might preach the gospel and that they might cast out demons. They might. Yeah. Well, yeah, or will or should or whatever the phrasing is there. Might. might you have it? No. Oh, okay. So I thought I did. That they might be with him, that they might preach, and that they might cast out demons. Relationship, ministry, supernatural power. Mm. Everybody wants to come to the Lord and they want to do something great for him and they want to heal the sick. They want to heal the blind. They want to cast out demons. They want all of the supernatural presence mm. in their ministry with none of the relationship. None of the relationship. So right. we get the cart before the horse. Right. And so but, they yeah. were with him three years. They did some ministry, but he was still there with them. He's like, um, you know, Hey, there's all these people. Well, we should send them home so they can go eat. He's like, how about you feed them? So they're like, wait a second. So they did what they could by finding bread and fish. He blesses it he supernaturally. The rest, and then he gives it to them to hand out. So they partnered in that with him. But then after he ascends, he gives them the spirit, spirit to come and continue the ministry of Christ being the presence on earth to go forth and then display the heart of God and continue the discipling, the teaching of the narrative of the kingdom. That's why right. Jesus came. He came to correct a narrative, right? He shows up and he heralds the gospel. There's a new king in town. Absolutely. Repent, change your mind. There's that phrase doesn't say anything about sin it says repent, change the way you think because the kingdom is here. Right. And then he began to display what that actually was setting the captives free, right? Mm -hmm. Loving the poor, healing the sick, healing the blind, forgiving sins. Oftentimes he forgave sins before he healed somebody. Right. And he's, here's another thing. Christ is forgiving sins before yeah, he so died that, on the cross. There you go. <laughs> before he died on the cross, he's forgiven sins. Mm. 
Before people are saying, oh, Lord, I feel so terrible for my sin. Would you forgive me? He's forgiving sins. He just, boom, forgiveness, forgiveness, love, love, inclusion, acceptance, correcting narrative. Everything that the Pharisees did, he's doing it pretty much. It's a preemptive strike, man. He's he's preemptively forgiving, man. You know what I mean? He forgives us before we even ask. While you were still dead in your sins, you know, trespasses. Yeah. Before, before, before you were alive or came to the point of resurrection, you had no say in whether or not he died on the cross for you. He did it. And then we, we step into it. And so he's, he's correcting narrative all over the place, right? He's doing it with the narrative towards women. He's doing it with the narrative towards the lepers, towards the sick, towards those who've been exiled, towards those who are, you know, from other places, whatever, even the narrative towards like Roman soldiers. Right. He's even even the narrative. I, I was I was uh, I, I preached on uh, John 21 last week. And what struck me is this part where they're fishing. Peter's, you know, Peter's Peter's got to be he's full of shame. <clears throat> oh, right. He feels like a jerk. And he's like, he denied he, Christ. He denied Christ three times. He says, I'm going fishing. I don't think he was just going to go recreational i think he's thinking i'm i can't do that so i'm, I'm going, going back, back right to yeah. where to i his, was his money so, maker and the holy spirit says uh no you're not they catch nothing <laughs> right oh, but you know they're out there they catch nothing so they guy on the shore says hey throw it on the other side john says oh, it's the lord I, I recognize him by, you know, they've seen him three times. This is the third time they've seen him post-resurrection. They didn't recognize him by who he was. They're only 100 yards away. They had to know it's Jesus normally. But he, they knew it by what he told them to do. Mm-hmm. And they pull in the hall, and Peter jumps out of the boat. Well, he gets dressed first. <laughs> yeah, he puts but his clothes on. Thankfully, goes, thankfully uh, the disciples of John who gave us that chapter told us that gets gets up on shore and jesus is standing in front peter, of a charcoal like a fire yeah the only other a time fire. the other only other time there's a charcoal fire is a couple months back <laughs> when he's in caiaphas courtyard mm. oh, warming his hands in front right. of a charcoal denies, fire denying yeah. Christ. I, yeah. jesus recreates wow. the scene Gosh. of the crime no way and then he's like peter you love me you love me more than your life. You love me more than these is what they say. And, you know, I can go into some of the things about that. But what's beautiful, he asked them three times, and each time is gentle. Hmm. It's not like, look, you've told me you love me before, and you denied me. It's not, he's kind of, he's kind of put it out there, but he's not wagging his finger in yeah. any sense, hmm. saying, come on, just feed my sheep. Mm. Just tend to the people. You're not going back to being a fisherman. Yeah, you're a fisher of men, not a fisher Fisherman. of fish. Yeah, fish you know he's, yeah. he's he he doesn't say that outrightly, but he's heralding back to that original call. I mean, he's almost he's, he's almost walking him through repentance and changing a mind. There's a mindset that's that's happening. Jesus is love resetting mm. his mind, giving us giving us a perfect example he and didn't say all look experience. you you uh-huh. you did this so let's hash it out no he just said you love me three times then go love my people man you know your calling is just as valid today as it was then and it's at that point peter turns around and i mean you know but listen like i wonder how many times you know the disciples are hanging out and they're spending time together and i'm sure some of them they probably weren't all together they probably are experiencing different things at different moments but how many times did peter have a conversation where he's sitting around and he's going i'm so stupid i messed up i can't believe i did it and then john and some of the other guys are no nah, dude it's man you know jesus he forgives you and this and that and it isn't until peter has an experience with, with Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. and here's the words that his mindset has changed, that the bars are torn off, mm-hmm. and he can step into life on the other side of yeah. being captive to these thoughts. So beautiful, like so gentle, it, it, so it's, loving. It's through that experience, man. You mean he didn't start a prophet reading plan? He and should buy, have. And, right. buy, and buy a bunch of scrolls. He didn't get plugged and wake into up, the wake up early group. in the morning and. <sighs> Why are you guys trying to get me salty? <laughs> it seems you, to, it seems to me. What podcast it seems on? to me that a lot of what we're talking about here is the gentleness and the kindness of Jesus being so astounding because they were expecting 
wrath. They yeah, were expecting yeah. the finger wagging. They were yep. expecting consequence. And rather than that, he fulfilled them with his kindness and his love, his gentleness and his grace. Well, Lord. I think it's hard to not take our experiences with man, you know, whether that be our parents, uh, any yeah, authorities in true. our lives, sure. and to not blend those in with, with Jesus or with God or, you know, any of that. And to expect that the wrath is going to be, right. you know, that. It's hard to not let those things That's why together. the narrative change is so important, because how can you call God Father if you, right. have, if you have a poor narrative of what fatherhood looks like, feels like, acts like? Yeah. I, I, that's one of the significant things that I think Jason was even talking about. I mean, I'm thinking as he's telling his story, wait, you're a churchman. So somewhere, somewhere along the way in the years of the church, mm -hmm. no one loved you that way no one no one said no do you love jesus yeah right yeah i mean you granted know, maybe i wasn't completely well, open and honest about things but still like you're saying yeah it's like it's almost as if so i i grew up in a small baptist church and i was baptized there but then when i was 14 that's when i feel as though i came to know the lord by his spirit at work in me mm -hmm. Um, but I, the way I've said it, and I hate to say it this way, but I said, you know, I grew up in a small Baptist church, but it wasn't until, until 14 that I, that I heard the gospel. Well, it's not that they weren't preaching the gospel. It's just that I hadn't heard it. If that makes sure. it like I, I hadn't perceived it sure. at that point in time. But, um, anyways, it's probably not that I haven't heard this message in some way, shape or form, but I can tell you, I have, I have not heard the message of being a victim of a false narrative. I haven't heard that. Mm -hmm. The first time I heard it was the Lord telling me, I, you know what I mean? And I think that I the, didn't hear it from the I pulpit. Think, I think that the pushback that <clears throat> some people might give for that is it's like almost you're not taking your sin seriously. And so it's almost like the, why, I, I you know, why should I, when Jesus took it seriously enough for me, you know what I mean? Right. Like, but, <laughs> right. And, and and oh, those you, know, it's, you know it's interesting to me when we were speaking about the father and gosh man fatherhood is so dope man like I told being dope. being around Ezra That's and dope. it's interesting to me that this because Ezra is a free free boy mm -hmm. you know what I mean <laughs> and he is so loving and so kind and so gentle and he gets to run around and he gets to play freedom precedes knowledge he doesn't have any knowledge of anything he's free already he mm. knows one thing ah, he knows one thing daddy loves him mm. and his his survival my presence in his life is absolutely necessary for his survival but he doesn't have to worry about any of that stuff he doesn't have to worry about me putting rules and regulations and telling him what to do all the time yes i will correct him you know what i mean but that's all done in love and he's a he's joy he's joyous he's able to run around he's able to laugh and how much of that do we lose as we as we mature and we gr mature and grow up and and receive all this information right and and it keep, and it gets it, it it's like we're actually walking into slavery yeah you know what i mean because we come out of original goodness <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee. oh, you mean the goodness that was there before all this? You mean well, the, the but, but imagine, the Lord but, but imagine before they partook of the knowledge of tree or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they were free, completely free in the garden in communion with God until they knew what sin was. Wow. You know what I mean? It's true. So Freedom getting back, to, we want to get back to the garden. Well, that's that's what he came to do. You know, to, to get back into communion, Absolutely. to get back into that. That's and we're good. so busy heaping law and heaping Ugh. here. Read this book. You're a new believer. Read this book. Read th no. How about you get you fall on your face right. and I'll fall on my face with you and we will praise God and watch him come down and change your Man, life. You know, some of the some of the best some of the best time with believers that I have had lately has been with two other people. We've been hopping on zoom calls and, and, uh, once a week, and we've just been basically closing our eyes and praying and just asking the Lord, just like, Hey, we're going to seek the Lord right now. Mm. And we're all saying, all right, we're going to close our eyes. What do you see? What's God showing you? What's That's God it. showing me? And, and the revelation that God revealing his word to us then has been astounding astounding now i can you sound say, like a mystic astounding i am 
I'm a mystic too. Let, let me wave. Show. Let me wave, wave my that? wand. Good idea for a show. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but so, but here's the thing. I can't tell you how many times I've sit in, I've sat in situations with multiple, more than groups, you know, three or four, five, ten, and we're reading a book, seeking out knowledge, and there's some stuff that happens, and we get right. around, and everyone knows the right thing to say, but they're looking for the knowledge to drop. It's one thing when we're sitting in a circle to dispense the knowledge for everyone's benefit. It's another thing when we're sitting there silent going, okay, God, now you speak. Right. Well, you're, you're always speaking. We're just going to listen. Well, we're going to tune into that and whatever you want to say to us. And that's where life change is happening that, in my life. Yeah. And that's, and there's a reason for that. It's because it's because the giftings are made manifest for the edification of the body. body. I was talking to Derek about this too, because every time I, t I call Derek or every time I call Jason or every time I call Jeff Jewett with, I'm like, Hey, what do you think about this? It leads into a deeper conversation and just we're just talking. There's no, there's no expectation of, well, and Derek doesn't say, well, you know, Casey, why don't you pull out your Bible and we'll, you know, it's not like that. It's all we're doing is talking and bouncing. Discourse. And then all, then the gifting comes up through the spirit because my spirit and the spirit inside of me is connecting to the spirit inside of him. Yeah. Yes. That's, yep. That, that yep. communion is, is being made manifest. The giftings are proud or are sprouting or co are coming forth. Derek's giftings, my giftings. And then we both leave the conversation edified, edified. You yeah, know what I mean? Built up. It's not, oh. it, 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 it really, we really do. I'm like, dang, Derek. You know, like, man, I gotta go to work now. Yeah, no. it's well, usually man, early. Hey, that's what that's what this podcast was originally started with. You two guys exactly. hopping on yeah. phone calls and having these deep conversations. Phone, yeah. Right, we're rights. not here. I'm not. I mean, I've got my Bible here, but we're not like, okay, well, why don't we all turn? It's like, dude, we're just talking, man. And yeah. the giftings, the gifting, because we're in communion. Where where two or three are, there I am also because he's inside of us, dude. dude. That's I, why he says that I'm yeah. there because I'm inside of you, and you guys are you guys are linking up. And right. Up together, you know. I said something. We're doing that day. avatar. We're taking those little avatar Correct. things and leaking, <laughs> leaking, linking into. I I said something the other day, and I don't I don't know what this will do for the show at this point in time, but. I, I messaged Christopher and I said, you know, if scripture were so powerful to change a heart, Adam should have written down God's command to not eat of the tree, and then right. Eve would have never sinned. Right. Mm. If she just had it written down and she could have read it yeah. over and over and over again, maybe she would have never given into it. You know, and this thing about slavery, <laughs> this thing about slavery too, like it just, I was thinking about the matrix when I came over here. It's like how many, how, Bro, how, often, so how many often, how often, revelations how often matrix. people, people don't want to be set free. They don't right. want truth. They don't want to take the pill. They don't, they want, don't want to go want down the rabbit hole because it's much easier to live to live as a slave and to know and have my routine and know everything that's going to happen rather than step into an uncharted territory that's freedom. Because it's scary. Until you and tasted it, man. I, I don't. And I, then you won't go back. Right. There's no. You going, can't go back. Once you've tasted the unconditional love of the Father, there is no going back. I yeah. mean, and this is what you know, Casey. You said something earlier about how like walking with people is messy. Like walking side by side, yeah. it's like ah, oh, it's, it's not easy. It's messy. But there's also mystery in it, <clears> and <throat> I think that mystery makes people uncomfortable right. because there's not certainty there. I love and it. so, and so you, right. right. But, but that's the Christian yeah. faith. It, it, yeah. it, there is tension that exists there. You know, there is not 100% certainty in it's all dynamic. things. The, Jesus, when he spoke, he didn't outright give people the answers. I mean, there, he wanted I people to it. wrestle with things. And so oh, yeah. he was to, a, he was a rabbi. That's what they did. Yeah. yeah. And so, but for us in this life, at least in this Western life, we want the step-by-step -step guide, one, right. two, three, ABC, you know, bullet points like, and it's not, while that may seem more convenient, I don't know that it's right. as transformational. And, and I, and it's not. And like a case in point, let me flesh this out. It's like Derek, I mean, Jason, you too, but, um, Derek, because this is just what I'm thinking about, but, um, when this stuff happened, like the divorce and everything else, this man was here from the very beginning. This man saw me drunk on the floor yeah. crying. You know, he saw me everything and he has walked from that period Gosh, to dumb. now. And we were just reflecting yesterday about how, what a blessing that is to me and to him because we walked that together and he, he's able, because when you walk with people, even though it's messy for a time, then you get to see the fruit of the, right. the heart. You get to see the harvest of all that right. stuff happening. And if you, if you bail on people, you're, you're actually missing out on a blessing because you don't get to see what happens in the in-between. And he knows where I was now or then and where I'm at now, you know, and like that's walking with people with like good, so, bad and the ugly, you, dude, because I'm telling you it was ugly. You also miss out on some some purifying in your own life, because guess Correct. what? For Derek to walk alongside you or me or anyone mm -hmm. else, it's a bit of inconvenience. There's a little bit of dying to self that happens. There's a lot of bit of and, dying and, to self. And so you miss out on that. 
and that own purifying yeah. of yourself when you don't walk along. If you haven't ever walked alongside anyone through a difficult trial, you are missing out on some right. extreme Jesus character Absolutely. developing type stuff that, that could happen in it's your life. It's not right. information, it's presence. Yes. Mm. I mean, that's we're conditioned to want information, but it always comes back to presence is where the transformation is occur, Je- occurs. Jesus said, you know, go into the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, teaching them all that I've commanded and surely I will send you a book that will contain everything right. I ever said yes. so that you can go yes. back and read it over and over and over again so that you will my words will never depart from you now scripture is useful Absolutely. we know that it says of itself it's useful Absolutely. but he said lo I will be with you yeah. even into the end of the age the Bible then, didn't set me free dog right you know what I mean and then he said that he would send a spirit he said I will not leave you as orphans I will send you the comforter he will teach you all things he will show you things to come I mean he paves the way for the place of the spirit of God his presence to be with us every single step of the way it's presence based living not informational knowledge acquisition for the purpose of transformation. Right. You know, it's, man, it gets tough. Uh, I want to point out what Jordan uh, Savage He's been said. hanging in there pretty he's tight. Oh, chilling. yeah, I appreciate him, Jordan. man. He, yeah, he, he's been jumping on. But he said, um, and this is his comment, he says, man, church judges people so much by where yeah. they are now yeah. rather than their story. Why? Like, why judge at all? That's not our job. Well, so there's a lot to unpack there. But what I really want to point point out is where he says about, you know, man, the church does it, but we do it. We judge people by where they are and not by their story. And that's mm. that's what happens. Most of the time, we don't know where they're coming from. And we act like we don't know where they're going. If they know the Lord, we know where they're going yeah. because Scripture tells us where they're going. They are predestined to be conformed into the image of the right. Son, and, and they so are they are. Being they are in process. We or what did we say last time? Because we don't like the word process. Journeying. Yeah. They are journeying along, so we know where they end up. It's just a matter if we want to be with them while they get there or not, right. or we want to look at that part of their story and then make a judgment call and then write them off. Right. Scripture tells us, see that no one falls from grace. And a lot of times wow. we, yeah. ma- we, we make people fall out of that place of grace because of their actions and because of where they're at right now. There's an incumbency on me to make, to <clears throat> offer you so much grace. It's really hard for you to fall out of it. Right. Mm. Right. Mm. That's goodness, man. There's freedom in all this. There is. I hope so, man. I really think so. I think that's the purpose. And again, the freedom that I have right now is more in my heart and my mind than anything. Like my understanding of my identity and truly what Christ has done for me. Mm. So you know, free. yeah. And so, so again, so, if my focus isn't on the law, I need to stop this. I need to stop this. Number one, I know that the father's heart for me is that I mature out of that and that he replace all that and heal what was, what was diseased and broken and hurt and to redeem it all. And so now I just say, okay, Lord, how do I continue to partner with you in what you want to do with me moving forward? It's no longer guilt and shame and hate myself and I suck and I'm terrible right. again. It's interesting that you're experiencing that freedom right now. You know what I mean? And I'm experiencing freedom from my sin as well, you know, and like you said, man, like, there's just that point, you know, well, it's, it's different. That's why I yeah, told you, I yeah. don't see you going back. It's different. I've been, we've been up, we've been up and down the hill a time right. or two and that's okay. Yeah. But it's different. There's freedom. There is freedom. So you, Freedom just leaks off people, yeah. bro. You know what I mean? It really does. And it, 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 you can see it. You can see it. Right. You can, it's a tangible thing that you can see in other people's lives. So Jason, so yeah. to someone who's <laughs> listening, who may be sitting here and they may be feeling some hope, you know, a, a new hope reignited in them. Um, and they've, you know, help us over one. Can they help us? Uh, help, us hope, help us, bro. Be one. Can <laughs> maybe, maybe they're sitting there and they've been wrestling for years and years and years with, with, you know, what sin or mindset or thought process. How do they begin to take steps you know, what does it look like for them? And it may not be this super complicated yeah. thing, but I mean, well, speak to that, like to the person who's like, man, how do I do this? How do I begin to be set free from being a so, slave? Yeah. It, re- it just reminds me of a phrase that I heard one time where it says run dirty, like run to Christ dirty, you know, like 
regardless of where you're at. So a lot of times, like, especially with the sin of like lust and pornography and masturbation, that kind of stuff, you feel disgusting after engaging in some of that stuff. And the guilt and the shame is so real that you try and get as much time between the act and when you actually go and then you go to Christ because you want to feel less dirty when you go to him and you're like, Oh, I got 24 hours under my belt. Okay. God, I'm sorry. Versus like, as soon as you're done and you feel that guilt, you run dirty and just go to the Lord. So no matter what, number one, go to him. And number two, cry out. Like I always, I always say cry out and just be honest, be as brutally honest as you can be with the Lord. Dude, can you imagine? Okay. So you want to talk about running dirty and we've been talking about the woman caught in adultery, literally <laughs> not there with the blanket or robe covering her. I mean, lit, who knows caught in the act, like out there, you know, just fresh from her sin, like right. still sweaty, <laughs> like the Lord and just the kindness that we've been talking about. It, yeah, it's, I mean, it's just wild. make sure whoever is experiencing that kind of shame that you have to know, man, I, I can't, I don't know how to convey that over a podcast. He's kind. He loves you. Yes. His love it's is gentle. so gentle. Yeah. It's so the, the look in his eyes is not a hint of disappointment. Not one. Yeah. Not even a bit of disappointment. It's, I mean, it's one. love. It's just yeah. reaching through time and space. Mm, that's so good. We, uh, Christopher and I, we, we had gotten turned on to the Bama podcast, B E M A Bema or Bama. And, um, they really take a, they really take a Hebraic slash Jewish approach to the scriptures. Mm. And so they basically retell the entire narrative of Genesis. Um, and it's, it's super interesting, but one of my favorite episodes is I think probably the first episode and it's called trust the narrative. And so they, they lay the foundation, the story to it. Yeah. Trust the story, story, trust the narrative. And so they just lay the foundation of exactly what you said earlier. Really good. You are. So Jesus says, no man is good except for God. But if we think about our original, the way that we were originally created, God our looked, original goodness, our original goodness, but right? Not our original sin, that, original yes, goodness. Right. So the Lord creates us in his image. So if you want to talk about original sin, like, and the Lord created us with sin in us. So he created us in his image. So he also has sin that he passed on. Like, what are you talking about? He passed on goodness, that word tove. And he said, it's very good. And that word good was um, first introduced when he's talking about the plants having seed that had the potential to bear forth fruit after its own kind, right? Mm-hmm. To give birth after its own kind. And so intrinsically, the Lord created us good that had the potential to give birth to more good, to continue that which he created by making man and filling right. the earth and subduing it. And so the narrative is that the Lord created us in his image, looked upon us and said, that's very good. I'm very pleased. It it that it literally means like pleasant. Mm. So he looked at us and he said, "Oh, how pleasant." Mm. And so he's pleased with this. That is the that original hasn't narrative. Changed. Yeah. That has not changed. Now, again, consequence of sin, right? They disobeyed, but they were deceived, so then they moved into death, you will surely die. That actually happened. The relationship was broken, but all of the narrative of scripture is God always desiring to be with and pursuing with his people, his people, always desiring to reconnect, you know, even then becoming the sacrifice and, and taking it all on himself restore and I think, to restore it. I think what you're talking about ties in. I think we should hit on what Jordan just threw out up there because I think that's a struggle for a lot of people. Yeah, that's a podcast itself. I mean, yeah, we may have to, <clears throat> to tackle that, but. What do you want to read it? Yeah, sure. Jordan Savage is saying, how do we experience that gentle love? Um, I'm assuming he means without holding fear of his uh, Old Testament judgment. So how do we experience the gentle love of the father while we also have record? Uh, So, yeah, the Old Testament, this, this is, this is so good. And there's all kinds of podcasts that talk about this. Like, how do you reconcile the God of the Old Testament with the New Testament? But when uh, John talks about Christ, he says, he says, no man has seen God 
except for the son. And so the son came and even the full, Abraham, even, right? Even Moses, Moses, even Ezekiel. I mean, so all of the Old Testament people, they didn't truly see God. Right. So was there their seeing of God veiled? Well, yes, because Paul tells us that Moses had a, saw a glory, had a glory that was still veiled because it was veiled by the law. So there was not a true image of God that existed yet. So when we see that, we don't see the fullness of the revelation Dang, I've never of, heard who, that. of who Christ is. Right. And so when Christ came, he showed us that gentle, exact right. But if representation you, exact of the father, yeah. but even if you read the scriptures and the prophets who came with a hard tongue from the Lord, right? Saying repent or this, that, and the other, there was always the desire for people to turn their hearts back towards him. There's always a way out, but then he was always promising the coming Messiah and the, the covenant to come where he would erase all our sins, all. you know, right. come it my, one of my favorite scriptures come now, let us settle the matter. Though you were as red as crimson, I will make you as white as snow. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just right then and there is like, this is what's going to happen. I settle. Let's settle it. Let's settle the matter. Let's settle. Right. That's the gavel hitting the bench Not guilty. and him and him making the judgment. Not guilty. This is how it's going to be. Not guilty. I will see your sins no more. He even says, for my sake. I will wipe out all of your sins. For my name's sake. For, yeah. yeah, because he wanted so badly to be back in that original relationship with us. For my sake. I want you so bad that this is for my sake. Brian Zond says, God is like Jesus. God has <laughs> always been like Jesus. Mm -hmm. There has never been a time when God has not been like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, we haven't always known that, mm -hmm. but now we do. But now we do. Right. Yeah. So, Dang. I mean... And it that, that, it takes if a, you can't imagine Jesus doing it, don't imagine, imagine God, God doing, doing it. it. Yeah, it um, hmm. it's a str it it is definitely a topic that people have to wrestle yeah, with. That's a narr It's a big narrative. Yep. Yeah. I, and I think you know, for those that are wrestling, man, honestly, I'd say stop. You know or, or I mean? you know what, man? Like stop, this, stop wrestling. This just goes back to the to the whole experiential thing. Why don't you just ask God? Right. <laughs> God, who who are you like? God, who are you? you go. What is your character? What are your thoughts toward how Lord, how do I reconcile that? And I know that sounds like a Jesus juke. And I promise yeah, I, I don't mean right. it to be right. because it sounds so simple, but I can't get past this Once whole, this experiential it, man. It, it like just, you, right. just yeah. ask, stop. Yeah. And there's a point, man. And I think that that verse be still and know, mm -hmm. I think is better interpreted or, sh and I, I'm sorry, I might be interpreting this wrong, but be still to know, right? That I am God. And so when in our stillness, right? Mm. When we stop wrestling, stop. okay, because we're wrestling, we're wrestling with that internal nature inside of us. We're wrestling with yeah. wanting, we are wrestling, we hate it because, and we're wrestling because we do want to please him. We don't want to do. So there is that connection there, but I'm telling you, like once I stopped wrestling and I strive, I, I, I ceased striving. Ceased I ceased Striving. Stopped. I stopped hmm. trying to even please God because there is no, you cannot, without faith, it's impossible to please him. You cannot, flesh cannot please God. It's Jesus at work. Jesus was fully pleasing to the, Jesus's work was fully pleasing to the father. So that Jesus inside of us and allowing him to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves, which is fulfill the law. Right. Stop wrestling and, and you will know you'll yeah. come. To, and when all that, when the storm, when that raging storm inside of you ceases because you've ceased and stop, you can hear that so small voice saying, I love you, you know, and, 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 and reproducing that in you. Stop striving, man. Yeah. You know. I, yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, if I could just give one little, little, because I know some people are like, well, ask God, and how do you know? Yeah, one little nug. This one's, this isn't even, this This is like you order a, a Chicken fry. nuggies. No, this is you order a, a fry and a, and a combo meal, and you accidentally get one nug in there. You're like, man, I wasn't expecting that. You got so a free this, nugget. You got a free nug. <laughs> or like so, a free onion ring in so your fries. Yeah, so here's what that is. So whenever I go to God and I ask God, and maybe this maybe this is dipping toes in mysticism or, or whatever, but I literally. He's a mystic God. So what's the, I mean, why do we have a problem? Oh, I don't care. Stuff? Well, I'm talking about. I don't have some people do. So, so here's what, here's we what that. We don't have a problem. We don't have a problem. Here's how I do that. 
I close my eyes and I just remind myself, I got it pulled up here in James. James 4 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Oh, yeah. I just trust. And I say, Jesus, I'm getting ready to draw near to you. I'm going to trust that you are going to draw near to me. I submit and surrender my mind to you right. and trust that whatever you're going to speak to me right now is from you. Now that takes an element of faith. That takes an element of like jumping out off of the cliff into, and an element of practice, too. right? And an element right. of practice, you know, like disciplines. Yeah, there's all of that stuff, but and then just trust God and just ask God, God, who are you? What are you right. like? And then just and sit and wait and just whatever thoughts come to mind. And then obviously if you, if you're nervous, you can test them with the scriptures and see what they line up. But I can tell you this, God has spoken a lot of things to me before that I've never seen in scripture, but that line up with his character and who he is. Now it doesn't say God is exactly, you know what I mean? I'm just, so I, there's an element of faith that comes with stepping out and asking God a question. He's not hiding from you. You know what I mean? And he will not hide himself from you. Right. You know, I he, think the fear from people is they're going to like, oh, maybe you're going to, you know, tap into the wrong source and you're going to, you know, start opening yourself up to demonic, you know, whatever and this and that. And it's like, what kind of God? Like, that's not who our God is. What kind of <laughs> father, what child is calling out to a God, uh, you know, a heavenly father, and then the father doesn't respond. He's waiting for us to, to right. ask him questions. Yeah. Well, let me yeah. respond to you and get you into a little bit more trouble just real quick. And Do it. We're probably, I don't know what's next, but <laughs> what you're describing is a contemplative life. Hmm. rather than a reactive life. Yeah. Part of the reason these narratives get hammered into us the way they are is because we are reactive people. We've, we grow up with the, is, everything's a reaction. Uh, in my prayer time, in every day, there's a time when I sit with Jesus. What you described, I call it sitting with Jesus. It's contemplation. It's I, I have prayed, I've done a lot of my intercessions, and now I want to hear what he has to say. I need right. to hear what he has yes. to say. Sometimes I have something specific I put out there on the table. Other times I don't, but it's literally the mindset is, it's like Casey just sitting right here next to me. I'm just sitting here and Jesus is right here, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to listen. And, and nine times out of ten, I don't get words. I just get love mm -hmm. and I'm telling you I'm transformed yep. in that presence of his love it's it's a game changer yeah, it changes absolutely. things and and that's how it wasn't until I started practicing you know contempl contemplative prayer or or even you know we have some other friends that maybe they would call it engaging you know there, there's all sorts of but it's it's taking place in the imagination and the mind and almost letting God say God I want to give you control of this thing that you created in me this imaginative part of my yeah. brain I want to give you control of that and right. I want you to use that and man that is where have I have experienced never has he wagged his finger or mm, shamed nope. in that? There's, oh, certainly not. Right. Never. And it wasn't no. until then, until those experiences, that I had truly felt and had experiences. And I'm not talking these crazy, you know, right. wild, but I'm just right. talking feeling the love of God outside of maybe I'm in worship and maybe there's some, some sure, extra kind some. of emotional stuff. But I'm talking from a there's no other stimulants mm. just from right. just from no God. music, no anything, just yeah. sitting there in just silence him. and stillness Bro. because that sheds that sheds false narratives that we've believed about him as well. Oh, Cause, totally. cause that was one thing with me and like what, what contempt contemplation does for me is when I'm still and I'm it takes a little bit to get your mind stilled. But I'm, I come to him like trying to come naked, man. Like I don't want anything that I've presupposed about you to interfere with the way that I'm about to experience what you have to say to me. Right. Whoa, leave it right. all at the door. Right. Wow. Leave it. Leave it all at the door. Everything that I think I even know about you, mm -hmm. even if I think oh, God is love. Well, my distortion of love is, or my Could perception of love is yeah. distorted. <laughs> so I can't come to him and say, God, you are love in the way that I think of love because he's so otherly. He's yeah. so otherly, man. Mm -hmm. Like even our even Holy. our little our little tiny like idiosyncrasies about the way that we think about him are in a large sense wrong until he reveals it to sure. us. You good. know what I mean? That's a good word. So Jordan had a question based on, yeah, yeah. again, on what we said. He said, man, I hear y'all. I really do. But how do we hold on to that? How do we truly believe in the gospel? Like how do we truly get that God has reconciled us? So I'm reminded of a scripture. I'm reminded of two things. Number one, the Moses generation. They they said, mm, oh, we're yeah. afraid of him. You go see what he has to say, and then you yeah. tell us. <laughs> yeah. And so the way to not really get that is to depend on somebody else's experience of him and try yeah. and make it your own. 
It's never going to happen. Uh, number two, Scripture talks about uh, faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God, for we must believe that he created all things and that he rewards those who diligently Diligent seek, him. seek him. Do you believe that he rewards those that diligently seek him? Because like what you're saying, it's you might you may have had some sort of narrative about contemplative spirituality or Christian mysticism or whatever the heck it might be. Right. Like, oh, you shouldn't empty your mind because then you just open it up for all these other things to come in. But then when you focus the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Well, when right. you focus right. on the Lord and you say, Lord, I'm opening my mind to you, my heart to you. I want to hear what you have to say. Do you truly believe that he will reward you for diligently seeking him in that moment? And so my my thing to you, Jordan, is to just say, go to the Lord, man, get to that place and just ask him and just keep asking, just keep asking and just keep asking and just keep asking. I just come empty, man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because that's how you're going to get filled. You uh, got to empty out. Dang, everything. that's a t-shirt. Come you, empty. You come empty. Really? I, I would want to tell Jordan to, you know, find somebody that's walk with somebody that has grace for you that that dispenses that is a glove on like a god's hand father. something like yeah. that yeah i mean yeah and there's encouragement to be had for sure like that's what the brothers are for right yeah like we're there to encourage the body build one another up i don't know if he's local or not but man that just kind of broke my heart when i read that oh man because like, i know that feeling of what he's talking about yeah yeah, I can't remember where he's at. Jordan, where are you from again? So he'll tell us. But any of you guys have any closing? I think we might. Good episode. Man. We might need to do a uh, an entire episode on contemplative spirituality. We'll just call it spiritual mysticism. <laughs> Let's just call just it Christian mysticism. Right in. Spiritual spiritual heretics. Yeah, yeah. We'll just, <laughs> just drop it. I think there's already a heretics podcast, but, no. yeah. but <laughs> there's always room Holy for one heretics. more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Her heretic happy hour. We had Keith Giles on one yeah. time. Yeah, he's yes. on there. Yeah. Heretic happy hour. It's yeah. insane what we label as heresy sometimes. Man. Anything, anything that anything isn't exactly anything what we that believe. anything that doesn't fit in the most widely accepted Christian box. So I guess Jesus was a heretic then. Apparently. In a lot of ways. Oh, yeah. but oh well, he's sure literally they, calling we would himself kick him out of every church that he oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, so yeah, heresy is any doctrine that you believe that I don't think is right. And then today Darren and I were talking about the prosperity gospel and it's any gospel that is not the one that I preach. Yeah. Is the prosperity gospel. Dang. <laughs> oh goodness gracious. All right. Well that's all I got. You guys got any closing comments? I just love this podcast, man. I love doing cool. it. I love doing it's it. It's fun. Yeah. It's good conversations. And when I think about that scripture where I guess it's Joshua, I can't remember, where the Lord basically tells people, um, yeah, North Carolina, um, the Lord tells people like, you know, my take my word, bind it around your wrists, write it on your forehead, write it on your doorpost, talk about it when you're coming and you're going, when you're laying down to go to sleep, mm -hmm. when you're getting right. up. Basically, the Lord is saying... Live a life that is contemplative of the things of who I am and the things that I've said. My presence, my existence, my law, my commands, my desires, my heart for you. And I think this is absolutely what the podcast does, is we create a space where we're just having these conversations about all of these things. And I yeah, I heard somebody say one time, it was a, a female rabbi, <laughs> um, and she said, you know, Judaism has heretics, but they're our heretics because they are so used to having discourse about the Lord that they welcome it no matter how far off it is. So even if there's something they consider heresy, they still say it's they're our heretics because we're in this together. We're living out this commandment to talk about it day and night, no matter what coming and going. And I just love that. And I think that's part of what discipleship is too. Yeah, having relationship where we're just constantly, I'm always messaging Chris, like you're calling Derek and me and, um, uh, Jeff and everybody. And you're just saying, Hey, I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about this. It is nonstop conversation about the things of the Lord. Nice. And you know what? I don't know that there's always probably if the, if you do that 10 times, I don't know how often reconciliation happens, man. It's where we flush out these things and land on a concrete, concrete answer to where it's like, oh, well, we got that one ironed out. Like, it's not like Drop that, that one in the bag. Yeah, it's not that one. It's yeah. not about that. You know, it's just about 
like you said, it just being a part of our lives, writing on our forehead, put on our doorpost, and it's just persistent throughout, you know, throughout our everyday lives. But it's not that it's like something that I'm prescribing to anybody either. Like I love this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I love thinking about these things. Yeah, me too. Me too. Just the concepts and and how uh, how drab is and, life when you know, when you haven't talked to your brother like that in a while. You know what I mean? It's just like man. Colossians says, set your minds on things, things above. above. There you go. I'm going to start the things because above the mind podcast. set on the spirit. The mind Jim. set on the spirit is life. life. Mm. Yeah, so good. Mm. Send us, uh, man. We haven't gotten some emails in a while, man. If any of the content that we've been conversations that we've been having have been, you know, uh, resonating with you or speaking to you, or, or you feel like they're giving you freedom, you know, in your mind, new thought processes, man. Shoot us an email at what's our email, Jason? Salty Dogs podcast at gmail.com shoot us an email or shoot us a quick facebook message and just let us know what you guys are thinking we'd love to to hear some of that stuff that stuff's always encouraging to us and you know it's good to to hear if god is doing something in your life based on any kind of conversations that we're having or haters we still haven't had oh yeah i love haters too yeah come on with it i I don't like haters i do (laughs) i'm still offended i need the lord to mature that in me Hmm. you're like seriously you're like a maturing eggplant (laughs) I don't even know what that means. I don't know, I don't what, that know what that means. Either. I don't know what that means either. Are you calling me bald? No. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, well that's all we times. got. Saltydogspodcast.com. Check it out. We've got blogs. We post videos. You can contact us. Shoot us a text message. Uh, fill out a form. Get a free sticker. People have done that. Free sticker. That's fun. That's right. So, anyways, I believe they're stickers? called. I believe they're called slaps now. Slaps. Yeah. Looks like slaps. A, yeah, we got some slaps. That's like a graffiti thing. Got some slaps. Okay, well. Yep, we'll send them. Slaps, right. squirts, sneezes. <laughs> I don't even.